Welcome to the cube method. This tutorial will teach you how to lay out the cube on a page to use it for landscape diagnostics. Let's start very simple by just drawing the outline of a page. This is the outline of a page. Very simple, very clear. And in this, you half the page vertically and horizontally. And then that gives you the basic for drawing the cube. The easiest way to draw the axonometric is to draw the lines at 90 degrees. This angle here is 90 degrees, 90 degrees angle. I think that really is a very important information. So if you have your site plan here on the site, that is 90 degrees. And you can then tilt it. And I think that is an important way to the zero line, which we will draw in a minute. But I think it is important to remember this. The 90 degrees angle is an important part. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to draw in this zero line because that dictates to what angle you want to tilt the site. And if you do it at 30 or 60, it will be very different. This is about 45 degrees currently. So a typical axonometric angle. Um, this is the zero line from which you tilt this. And then you put in the pro parallel projection lines here. You dot them in very carefully, just like I do. And they are again 90 degrees angle. And then that helps you to set up the cube. Now we have the site boundary line of the site. And to make this clear, I just basically give this a red tone, a red dashed line, a little bit thicker, and then it's very clear that this is the site boundary of the cube. And then after we have done that, go back to a black tone, we add this is the layer, the graded layer. Now it's kind of flat. When we add the soil profile below, and we've done the parallel projection on both sides, so we can just take this line down and then um, pull down at the same angle the line for the lower, lower, lower line. But it has to be parallel to this angle, and the scene goes here. I'm going to just draw this a little bit thicker. And then we have the soil profile below. And I will just repeat this without the arrow with a bit of a thicker line, and then I think it will make more sense. So here we have the soil profile. And you do the same with the atmosphere above. We do this a little bit higher because just to encourage the atmosphere drawn a bit higher, to <clears throat> atmospheric, to show the air above the ground. And there you can see you have three layers. It's a little bit too high, so I will go back um, to show you that it fits our page. So we could also go like that. So that we'll do it. There we are. So we have the cube in the drawing, in the in the side plan, and that drawing could be uh, that piece of paper could be on a piece of paper. Or I'm doing on the iPad, but it doesn't really matter. And then you have the basic layout of your site. So we've taken the site. Here's the site. And we have tilted it at 45 degrees angle to the zero line here, which we have drawn here. We have tilted that to this line here. And so that is really an important information. So that helps you a lot in understanding how to draw the cube. Now, this is the basic cube. And from here, we continue now extending. And this is the difference. So drawing an axonometric cube is not a big deal. But what we add to this cube in landscape architecture is the site context. And that's something which is different. And to make that clear, I use a really thick um, pen. And we extend the, the edges of the site at the same angle. We extend it to the edge of the paper. And the same goes here. 
the bottom and then we do the same here and we extend we extend it and now you see you have around the side the context and the size of the cube will the smaller the cube gets the bigger the surrounding context but at the moment we are not going to do this we're just going to start setting up the cube so you can see we have added the surrounding context it's all flat there's no topography yet in the site but what we could do is we could then start adding things so for example just to get us going we could add some soil particles in the profile so this is the soil profile of this site and then let's say at a certain amount um if this is a person so this is the other really good thing is because it's an axonometric it's always at scale in comparison to a one or two point perspective where the people are getting smaller in the background to the vanishing point in a perspective if i draw a person here little person this person is about the same is in the background here is the same height which means it's always at scale and now we know this person is about one meter eighty and we say the water table in this guard in this side is about two meters twenty or something and you can draw that right in here at scale even fantastic so that gives you a really good understanding we can use the cube for scaling and it's always consistent at the same scale we can use it as an x-ray tool because we are showing now things which you do not see with the bare eye. You need information, tacit knowledge. Let's say the groundwater table of my site is 250 or 280 meters below the grass area. And so this, this cube is used as a educational and seeing tool, the things you cannot see. And then we can just do a really simple adjustment to the topography and I'm just doing it really again with a thick line I'm going to draw them make it a bit thicker and here this is the top of the topography and it goes down a bit and then it goes back up and then on the other side the same thing a topography top and then it goes down a bit and then that shows you this is the the topography profile um, and then it goes below ground and you can see it actually shows the topography of the site. So you can actually integrate the topography in even a little river if you wanted to. Here is the little river. And um, you can see, you can actually also put in the topography. And I think that's a really important aspect about the cube. You can start really using it as an animation tool. And there's another really interesting thing you can do. For example, we can add a cloud and we will let it rain, but I will make the rain a little bit less dramatic. And uh, we let it rain, that's a little bit too th thin. Or I'll give it a bit of a drama here, and it rains on your site. And after a while, the site saturates the, in the soil, the, the soil will be saturated, and the water will run off into your little river downstream. So you can start to see how this cube helps you to really look holistically at systems and understand them holistically. And we're still taking this chunk out of the site. We could also extend the site and um, continue the topography. So let's just do that a little bit. We could continue the topography here using those arrows a little bit and say, OK, this is about the same height. It won't change very much. So you get a really good sense about the site around it. And to get even more of a scale, if we put a tree here, outside in the context, the size of the tree, if it's the same kind of tree, inside your topography of your site is the same. They will stay the same because it's, it's an axonometric projection, the scale at this end and at the other end is the same. And I think that's something which is very useful when you start learning to draw and understand and use drawing as a thinking tool, not just as a representational tool. Putting in people immediately gives scale. 
And I think that's the most important and to look underground and look above ground. So another example is if we put birds in, for example, above ground, well, they are a little bit too small. I'm going to make them a little bit fatter. You can see them. So they fly around and they migrate through your site. And that helps you to understand. Again, I'm going to use a different color to make it clearer for you guys. So they migrate through your site, and that shows you that you have to think in the site in different layers. And to do that, the best way to then analyze is to take that drawing, and I'm just doing it really small on the side. You're looking at three layers we are studying. This is the soil. This is the person in smaller. It doesn't matter, but it's the scale. We are looking at the water table. Oops, wrong color. Do it again. I think it's important for you to see. Um, you, it's a tool. There's the water table. Then we have the birds above. We talked about the birds above in the atmosphere. And they are migrating over your site. Oops, again, back. And they are migrating over your site. So you can start seeing that this tool acts in layers. So you have the layer below grade, the so then you have the soil profile. That depends, obviously, if it's flat. No site is really flat. And you have the, uh, the soil profile, the graded layer, and then you have the layer above. So you have the one, two, three areas you are addressing. And you are addressing things you cannot see, because when you're on the site, this tool helps you to see the things above and below and really start thinking about the holistic systems. And I think that's some, the, the, the power of this tool, that it starts you to generate ideas. I give you a final one in the section. It's a small section, but it doesn't matter. You can recognize it. There's the cloud. It's raining, and it's raining onto your soil, which is saturated after a while. And then the water will run off depending on the slope of the land, which I have shown in the axonometric. So there you can see it is an extremely useful tool to um, actually um, document the existing condition. And later on in another tutorial, I will talk about how you could take a site design and plant it in the site and use it as a, a tool to check if the actual site design fits the surrounding area.